We have a very special episode for you today here on Glass House TV. As you can see, this is my lovely wife, Jordan Ferguson. Hey, everybody. You know, the Bible says that he who finds a wife finds favor, and this is my favor <laughs> right here. Thank you, Lord. But as a married couple, we talk a lot, and we talk about a lot of different things, and we've been reflecting on all that God has done in our hearts and in our lives and in our marriage over the year 2023. So I want to turn it over and just ask, Jordan, can you introduce yourself briefly, maybe give us 30 seconds on you know who you are and your upbringing, and then let's jump right into what God is doing in your life and speaking to you and spoken to you over 2023. So kind of a brief background about me. I grew up in the church. I was born and raised knowing Jesus, um, reading Bible stories at night in my house with my mom and dad, Um, knew who Jesus was, knew all of the head knowledge that there was to know about um, God. And really in my 20s was when I met Adam when I was 24. Yeah. Yeah. So, but really through my late 20s was where the Lord took my head knowledge and created heart knowledge. He systematically went after things in my heart that knew him in my head, but hadn't really experienced him um, and received revelation from him. So through a move, through a lot of life changes, through learning who he was as my provider, through learning who he was as my healer, um, and really just being stripped of a lot of things, the Lord I I really feel like I got saved when I was 27, (laughs) Um, really coming under the revelation of Jesus and who God is. Um, And really the Lord has just been kind of burning off things ever since, um, bringing me into closer levels of intimacy with him. And specifically, like I've shared multiple times on the channel, Jordan and I both work in film. I do uh, lighting and camera department and she is an assistant director. So more on the side of planning and things like that. And the film world is very demanding for those of you who don't know or have never been a part of it. I'm talking, you know, 60 to 70 hour weeks are pretty normal. There were there was a season where Jordan was working 80 hour weeks um, for her department. It was really wild there for a minute. And naturally, when you get different shows going at different times, we're working at different schedules. I'm doing overnight. She's in the day or she's overnight and I'm in the day. So during that time, we had just gotten married and this was one of the hardest seasons of our life. And that ended last November. So just over a year ago. And after this season ended, we were both in a very dark, broken place. Our marriage was suffering because of everything that we had poured in and poured out to the film industry. And we simply did not have time for church. We didn't have time for community. We didn't have time for one another. So we vowed in that moment last November, Lord, from here on out, you will be our number one. And we put our attention and our efforts back into the word of God. We redevoted ourselves to the Lord. We redevoted ourselves to Jesus. We got into the word. We started to pray. And then we made a vow also that we were going to pray together every single night, even if it was one minute before bed and one of us passes out. Or, you know, if we got down on our knees in our living room and prayed, which we've done throughout the last year. So we wanted to approach you today about that topic of prayer in your marriage and just testify of what God did in our marriage, in our lives through that time of prayer. So every day we're here to share with you, we've prayed every single day leading up from that moment until today. And that's not a sweet brag. That's not a pat on the back for us. Look how spiritual and holy we are, but it's just a commitment that we made privately before the Lord that we were doing because we were in pursuit of him, because we had seen how ugly that we can be and because of what Jesus did on the cross became so real and revelatory for us in our relationship and in our marriage and individually. So Jordan, how from your perspective, what do you what did you see God do over the last year through that prayer time and how did that strengthen our marriage? Well I think, you know, prayer is such a sweet like relational thing with the Lord. And I, you know, the first thing I think of when you're talking is the kindness of the Lord leads us to repentance. And for me, a lot of this year, and I would tie it back into the fact that we were spending time in prayer together, really led me to a place of repentance. Um, You know, in the year that Adam spoke about when we were getting really busy, I was in a managerial position at work. And it was like, you know, my mom and dad used to say, my dad was in law enforcement. My mom and dad used to say, when you get home, take off the uniform. Um, And 
and really in that year for me, I, I got really bad at taking off the uniform when I got home. I kind of stayed in that managerial place when I got back into the home instead of stepping into my role as a wife in our home. Um, I really kind of got to a place where I was observing a lot of authority that wasn't mine, um, mm-hmm. whether it was through decision. Amen. <laughs> whether it was through decisions with finances, whether it God was... God works in mysterious ways. It sure does. <laughs> but so for me, I really think that the Lord through prayer brought me to repentance. And I think that how that happened is I think when a husband and a wife come together in prayer, you are coming together and you are participating in the covenant that is marriage. And marriage is not this. Marriage is this and the Lord, only tied together in the Lord. So when you're coming together in prayer, you're stepping in to the promise of that covenant. And I think really, honestly, participating in prayer for me taught me submission. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when we were talking about it, I just thought of Ephesians five and it says, wives submit to your own husbands as to the Lord for the husband is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church, his body. And he himself is a savior. And like, for me, not only did prayer together, um, kind of just naturally lead me into a place of submission and submission is not weakness. I do want to say that because I think, I think there's something in the church like that. The church has adopted a bit of the feminist movement from culture. Um, the church is not supposed to adopt to culture. Um, the church is a reflection of God. So I would say through that, uh, the Lord really just taught me true submission. Um, and in that he taught me how the bride is to respond to Christ too. So it really gets a lot bigger than that. He taught me a lot about myself on a personal and relational level with you, but then he also revealed a lot about what Christ expects from his body Mm -hmm. as the bride, um, and our role in our relationship with Jesus. Mm. It's really good. Um, You know, I know there's a lot of jokes about men and women in submission in marriage, but I didn't ask her to say any of this. I didn't tell her (laughs) to say any of this. All we did was pray. And obviously in every marriage, in every relationship, there are issues. And and men, you can see the issues in your wife. Wife, you can see the issues clearly in your husband. But the Bible actually says that when we're in conflict with our spouse and we're not in one accord, our prayers will be blocked, men. So we, it is important that we are in one accord at all times, and we take these things before the Lord in prayer. Pray together. That power of prayer, I don't know, there's something special that happens in the Spirit that unlocks, because the things I took issue with, the things that were bothering me, I was trying to take the high road. I was trying to honor my wife. Like the Bible says, it's not just women submit to your husbands and like you're some slave under a, a slave driver. No, that's not the idea at all. It also says husbands honor your wives. And I honor this woman and what she did. I knew how hard she worked. I know how much pressure was put on her at work. So I had a lot of grace, although I didn't love everything that was happening under our roof. We took it to the Lord in prayer. And even in times where we didn't feel like it, we did it. And God slowly began to restore that order in our home that had been lost because of the busyness and because we were out of the word, because we were not in unity and because we were not in one accord. So I say all that to say that when you pray, when you spend time together, God puts all those things in order. Mm -hmm. God is a God of order. He puts your house in order. You don't have to demand respect. You don't have to demand uh, honor. You don't have to demand submission from your spouse. If you go to the Lord in prayer, you just spend time reading. We don't spend time reading the exact same scriptures every day. We don't spend time in the secret place uh, together every single day, but we do pray every day. Mm -hmm. But we do spend time in the Word of God every day, and we do talk a lot, and we do communicate a lot. We communicate about everything. So when you honor what God has asked you to do, when you're seeking after the Lord, He unifies, and He brings those things together. He brings the respect. He brings the humility. He brings the submission and he brings that honor and that love and that reverence for one another. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I would just say like, even like on the flip side, again, kind of back on the side of the wife, like I think submission is such a trivial word that's been distorted a little bit. Uh, and again, in today's society, and I liken it to a word like meekness, like a lot of people view the word meekness as weak. 
Um, and something that the Lord really showed me this year, um, and I saw it somewhere, I can't remember, but meekness, I saw meekness is power under control. Right. Um, it's not a form of weakness. It is power under control. Like the meek will inherit the earth. There's power behind that. Mm-hmm. And so like submit, same with submission, there is power in a wife that submits to her husband who is under godly authority. There is power in a wife who knows her role. And it's not that I have a lack of confidence. It's not that I am sitting back and letting my husband live his life. And I'm just like uh, holding signs, supporting, cheering you on. No, like our role is to be the helper. Yeah. You know, like our role is to partner <clears throat> with you. Um, and I just, I, and again, going back to Ephesians and the comparison of the bride and the bridegroom and marriage, like our role as the church is to submit to the Lord, but does, it does not make the church inactive or unimportant. You right. know, our role is to submit to Christ, but the church is, is active. The church is the one that, um, is God's plan A, you know? So, um, I just really want to encourage wives that when you hear submission, it feels like a dirty word. Um, It's not. And I would just add, I would just challenge you to go to the Lord in prayer about that and ask him either to change your heart um, or to just show you more about what he says about biblical submission. Yeah, that's so good. This past year, you know, the the writer strike, the actor strike, all that happened in May. So Jordan and I got laid off from our jobs back in May, and we've been out of work this entire year. This has the, been the longest strike in film history. And in all of that, financially, we didn't have a bunch of money saved up and we were not prepared for this at all. But God has supernaturally shown up and provided. And you know, the number one reason that people get divorced is over finances. At least that's what the statistics say. But here, (laughs) miraculously, being the worst year we've ever had, absolute worst, and we had every reason to complain, every reason to give up, just like Job it felt like in some times. We had every reason to abandon God and walk away and say, I am done with this. But rather, this has been the best year of our marriage ever. This is our fourth year of marriage, and this has been our best year. When we've had every reason, everybody around us is looking at us like, how are you guys doing? doing this how are you surviving and more so how are you smiling and how do you have joy and we've been telling them it's not us it's him it's what God has been doing through us it's the truth of his word and he has told us over and over he who promised is faithful and we've seen that faithfulness of God so I know we're going a little bit long but I'm gonna let Jordan close us out with some final thoughts what would you say to somebody who is struggling in their marriage with their spouse to pray together You know, I honestly think that you said it the best the other night. We were with a group of our friends and just kind of talking about this topic. And you mentioned Nehemiah and how the builders, they had a hammer in one hand and a sword in the other. And really, when we walked away from that, that just stuck with me. And honestly, it made me do a deep dive into Nehemiah. But it really, when you think about that visual as a husband and wife, I know that we we say all the time, like, it's us versus the world. Um, but kind of back to that covenant relationship with the Lord. I think when you're in a position of prayer, when you are postured um, before the Lord in unity together, you are, the Lord places you back to back and he equips both sides. Um, so I would just really encourage, I know that th- the biggest way that the enemy can, can derail something like this is to distract and create apathy. And um, so I would just say, if you're having a hard time praying with your spouse, if you have a lack of desire to pray with your spouse, do it anyway. I know that that sounds really simple, but do it anyway, because in in so many ways that you don't see in the natural, it's moving things in the spiritual, and it is creating unity where you are back to back, and the Lord has equipped each of you with either a hammer or a sword for in season and out of season of whatever it is that's needed. So yeah, I would just say if that is something that you're struggling with, um, whether it's apathy or distraction or disunity even, Mm -hmm. I would just encourage you to do it anyway and see the faithfulness of God. Yep. 
I agree with that. Well, if you're not subscribed, we would definitely appreciate it and like the video so that more couples out there can hear about praying and just hear this testimony and hopefully it will encourage others to do the same in their marriage. But thank you so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one.